another exciting episode here at Dog TV Kenya. Kama kawaida, I'm your girl Linda Kenyita, and this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. And it's been a while since we had a trainer in the show, and so today it's a trainer series, and I'm um, having a chat with one of the best renowned trainers in Kenya. So let him introduce himself in case I I forget any other accolade. And before he introduces himself. Kama kawaida, remember, subscribe, hit the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video and also share, like, also leave us a comment. Kama kawaida, okay, let's keep building this community together. So far, so good. So, to our guest today, I'm going to give you this mic so that you can introduce yourself. Good morning, Linda. <laughs> Welcome to MK9s. Yeah, the home of protection dogs. Yeah, uh, my name is Moldo. But my real name is uh, Alexander Mwangi Moldo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we welcome you. Mm -hmm. This is one of our boys, Erevo. Erevo, up here. Up here. Sit. Hey, sit. Sit. Yeah. Up. Good. So we welcome you to the show. Yeah, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day here. Yeah. Hey, sit. Off. Sit. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Rimuru. Mm -hmm. I think you can feel the cold. <laughs> yeah. Now, Moldo, before we go to the action, and I know you're looking forward to the action, but I cannot go to the action part without asking you. You said you're the youngest trainer in the country. For how long have you been training dogs, and how did you start? That question is not that easy, mm -hmm. but as you know, every good thing has a beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, for me, I started my dog journey when I was uh, still a little boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, this one is not a myth. Mm -hmm. Actually, for real, mm -hmm. yeah, I was raised by my grandmother mm -hmm. here in Rimuru. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and we have many guys who have dogs around, but before, when I was starting, there was a Mzungu whose name was Luke mm -hmm. down there, so we used to go to Chigoni for hiking and you could see him with a dog. Actually, I was, I think it's 2010, yeah. I'm probably sure it's 2010 when I started training because officially I started the training at the hospital there, the whatever, the clinic, mm -hmm. yeah. So, <coughs> 2010, so, so, so that has been around 12 years of interaction with dogs. Yeah, so when did you decide now, at the, now because you're a full-time uh, dog trainer, when did you decide now, this is it, this is what I want to do? Okay, uh, it all went down when like... Uh, I went to high school. I didn't like high school. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's not that. Okay, but for me, I was not more into learning. I was more into animals because back then I used to have even other animals. But when I got to Form 1, I remember me dropping out of school. I used to study in Kisi, mm -hmm. dropping out of school because of the dogs. Then I came here. Like my grandmother was like, go oh, back to school. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> but the thing is, when I came, she then said, because you're into dogs, I give you a preposition. Like, I get, you get to keep your dogs here. We switch you from the boarding school. We put you in a local school, whereby you can be schooling, and then in the evening you come in to train your dogs. That was in Form 1. Uh, my performance, obviously, in school went up. Yeah, because now I can see my dogs daily, feed them, train them. Then I go back to school. Yeah, when I finished my... Form 4, it's when then I started being serious, a bit more serious. Yeah, because when I was in high school, I was just doing the pet trainings, the potty trainings, all that. Yeah, but in Form 4, I started seeing another part of the dogs, which is protection dogs. Yeah, because I had a Malinois when I was in Form 2. Yeah, her name was Dabi. Dabi, she was a detection dog. I was given to it by a friend whose name is Msani. <laughs> Most people know him as Msani. Yeah, so I fall in love with the breed and its capability. Yeah, then I had another Sebo given to me by David. He's popularly known as David. Yeah, so when I saw their capability, whatever they can do, then I started their training there. It, it was not a, quite a, a, an easy journey, mostly for me being a first time into the elite protection dogs. Yeah. 
When we were talking, you told me that there are different uh, categories of protection dogs. Do you mind doing the breakdowns for me, the, the, the levels or the different types of protection training that you do? Uh, now, most people on my videos, when I do my videos, I normally say MK9s, protection dogs. Or I normally tell everybody like, oh, this is MK9s, protection dogs. So people are like, oh, you just do the basic agitation and it's over. No. Protection dogs to us means that this is a dog that can protect you, whichever, in any means. For instance, we have the sniffer dogs, which are also protection dogs. They are not just cute for babies. Yeah, they are protection dogs. So to me that's detection, detect, detection dogs. But at the same time, to my own term, I can call the whole thing like protection dogs. But under the bite work, we have like the ranch dogs family, mm -hmm. personal, mm -hmm. and then you need a companion, which all are protection dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that guy over there, mm -hmm. he's a dual protection dog. Mm -hmm. He's a ranch, mm -hmm. as well as a personal protection dog. Mm -hmm. We have the other guy there, he's a personal protection dog. He's a Malino. Mm -hmm. He's owned by one of our clients. Actually, you're lucky you found the client here. Yeah, yeah so, for him, he's one of the most talented dogs in the country we have currently. Yeah, because he does serve three purposes. He can do tracking, he can do detection, explosive detection, and he can also like do the personal protection dog scenario properly. That guy, you go with him anywhere, at shopping mall, soft leash, yeah, and all that. So, as I had briefed you, we have the ranch dogs. This is a dog that can bite and can do tracking. Those now are the ranch dogs. Anything that, like, let's say the theft have happened, the dog can come, pick up an old one, then track, and do the apprehension by the end of the track. Then we have the personal protection dog. This is a dog whereby you can just, we can chill with it, even with you, but anytime, like, Linda, you become a threat to me, like, now I can just do, like, flip my finger, the dog will be on to you, yeah? Then we have the family, family protection dog. This is whereby this is a dog that we train to live in a family setup. Like you can be having friends come over, kids, even play with strangers' kids, then be social with animals, whatever, but guard the whole compound and its environs when needed to. Yeah. We have the other category we have, under which I didn't mention. When we come to protection dog, they also personal protection dogs, mm -hmm. they also act as kind of, let me call it, in other, in other words I can call it a uh, therapy dogs because by the end of the day you must be physically fit to own a dog like that, mm -hmm. like this guy here, like you go for jogging with him, yeah, you are day to day activities in keeping yourself fit because self care is not about taking a glass of water Linda and going to sleep. Mm -hmm. Self-care is being physically and mentally stable. And in order for you to be like that, it's to have one. A dog. Yeah, a dog. A dog keeps you mentally, physically stable. Yeah, apart from me, most people say I'm cuckoos because of the dogs. <laughs> Moldo, apart from you people, like they, they don't see the physical and the mental fitness, they see yeah, the yeah, cuckoo. They just see the physical, but the mental, <laughs> like, this guy is mentally ill in a way, but okay, it's because, like, you see now we are in Rumuru, already my pants, they are like dirty, but that's my world now. You don't expect to see me in a white collar, like, yeah, there are sometimes we, we do that, but now, like, you see our kind of weather, mm -hmm. the mud here. Now, can you imagine when I walk into the center, people are like, there goes the crazy guy with his dogs. <laughs> but anyway, mm -hmm. it's understandable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just be you. Cheza yeah. kiwewe. Yeah. Okay. Most people get dogs for protection and then they lock them behind somewhere in a kennel where the dogs are locked out throughout the day. And then, and it's so that... It's, people believe like when you lock away the dog, that's when it becomes more fierce. So they only open for the dog at night to offer protection. That was, I, I, was, I wanted you to expound on that and maybe touch on that because you say that you can train a dog, a protection dog, where it socializes with the family. It can even socialize with visitors who come, but still offer protection. Yeah, okay. For one, for those who are doing that, kindly stop it. That is animal cruelty. 
because you are denying the animal right to freedom. And by the end of the day, even you, you need to be free, the dog needs to be free. But that's a big myth. There is nowhere that you are, you are like, you are going to chain your dogs behind your houses, your cage, your doors, and then you expect them to be tough. They won't be tough by the end of the day. One, a tough dog is made up of good genetics, good training. Uh, in the world, it is believed only 2% out of 100%, only 2% of dogs that can bite you without no training. So for you, you are going to lock your dog there, expecting that the, the, the dog is going to protect you and your family out of nowhere. No, 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 no. It's not like that. So by doing that, when you are locking your dogs, you are giving them something we call avoidance. Then they won't be environmentally stable. Yeah. The reason why those dogs will be like that it's because like linda uh, you have a okay let, let me give you a, let's read this scenario eh? like you used you live in a forest in a dark forest in this dark forest you have never had a helicopter never seen even anybody then all of a sudden uh, in your territory like in your forest like this guy's come in with some torch torch and like let's say mabatis mm -hmm. or, or papers which are scrappy scrappy then what would you do kind of hi hide and kind of yeah, hide and cower and run mm -hmm. <laughs> so by the end of the day the dog which you're not socializing your dog it will do the same thing it will hide cower and run and even pee on itself mm -hmm. of which i won't blame the dog i'd blame the owner only later on to find that the owner is going to be disappointed the dog be the dog Thieves came in, it didn't protect me. Oh, this dog is very foolish. Like, no, 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 don't blame the dog, blame yourself. Be a responsible owner. Whenever you're getting a dog, know that you're getting a partner or a friend for the next 14 years. For, for me, I, I give it 14 years to all breeds, like 14 years, around 10, let, let me put it a minimum of 10 years. You should be there for this guy as this guy will always be there for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, to me, even here at home, they normally know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, even my personal life, the people in my personal life, mm -hmm. they normally know. Mm -hmm. Dogs feed first, mm -hmm. dogs come first, mm -hmm. then, like, you come second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but certainly, what are you doing? But what are you doing? But come first, but okay. They are like kids to me. Because by the end of the day, can you imagine Linda? This guy would take a bullet for you. This guy would take a man down for you. This guy will always be there for you. Then by the end of the day, you neglect the guy. Like, is that fair, Lily? No, it's not fair. So like, give him time, take him out for swimming, take him out for walks, training. Actually, most people say like uh, they have trained dogs but for me i normally say like training it's what we do with your dog on day-to-day -day basis not the sit or the down even the games like you hug you run with your dog around yeah you you end up making the bond more strong and you make the dog more reliable to you because the dog will always be like uh, when I come to him, it's, there is this theory we use in training whereby with, with the playing, the whatever, doing the fun and games and all that, it improves your dog's bond. There is this scenario where we call it operant conditioning. This is one of the training methods. There are only two dog training methods. One of them is operant conditioning, which is commonly used by many people, either by a fool, a trainer, or a, or a guy who knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. We mostly say when a guy is doing something, he does it. If you know what you're doing, if you don't know what you're doing, only two people do it. Okay, but operant conditioning is a scenario whereby it's like uh, you are a parent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So whenever you go home, you have a suite. Mm -hmm. Then you just like your kid hears you coming, and you're just like, uh, Milo, come. You give him the sweet. Milo, come. Like the, the other day. Milo, come. You give him the sweet. The kid will always be there for you because, like, he, he or she knows when my mom calls me, I'm going to be paid. There's something in the return, you see. Even the day that you won't be having that, whatever, that 
payment mode, let me call it the payment mode, he will still come and he will come with the same same motivation. Yeah, and what if you'll be like, my law come, you lock him inside the house. My law come, you just lock him inside the house. The kid, there will come a time, your kid will be seeing you and then he'll be running off and like, he won't even feel at home by the end of the day. He'll see as you like being this mean bully. Yeah. But if you guys can like change your attitude towards dogs, stop locking dogs indoors. If you feel like you there are too many for you, you just offload some. Yeah. Only be with dogs that you can be able to handle and take care good of in terms of feeding, health wise and also training wise. Yeah. Because by the end of the day even you you went to school. Yeah, so that we can communicate the way we are communicating and learn some moral, moral rules and regulations, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, you need to be a buyer. <laughs> <laughs> you need criminal. That is criminal. <laughs> and for my international viewers, I'm going to translate that. That is bad manners. That is criminal. <laughs> Stop locking your dogs. Like bond, have bonding sessions with your dogs. Now, advice to a young dog lover. You started young, you had people around you who were supporting you. Like you had to come to a compromise between you and your mom and you, uh, your grandma and your education. So advice to a young dog lover because we are getting <coughs> a lot of young dog lovers are reaching out and saying like I would want to have a dog or I love dogs what advice would you give to them what I can only say is this eh? keep it up keep the passion going don't let anybody who is not in your shoes tell you that it's not possible to own a dog it is possible most people say like is it dog is a police in the Kali? it's not about the price not Okay, to me, you can even get a Rocco breed and the Rocco breed can still work for you. Mm. Yeah, so if you love dogs, you don't have the, the whatever, the funds to go and get a hybrid or a pedigree breed, you just go, adapt one, and then we have the K KSPCA, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. They take the neglected dogs from the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just go there in their pound and adapt one dog, mm -hmm. which will be very nice of you. Mm -hmm. So by the end of the day, when you adapt a dog, mm -hmm. then... I would say this, training is an art. Mm -hmm. So you have said I encourage the young mm -hmm. dog enthusiasm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, to the young people out there, if you don't know how to train your dog, let's say you have your mongrel, you have your whatever, you have your protection dog there, you have your even your pet. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody can evolve with whatever. The training mm. yeah mm -hmm. it's like the other day you had these guys they came up with this sheng whatever cg you had. i miss g i do not do sheng <laughs> 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 I, 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 I i'll tell my guys a lot to give you one really so that we can tell you by the end of the show but anyway uh, training is an art mm -hmm. this is whereby it's not a must like you follow what moldo is doing what michuki is doing karori is doing Mokua is doing, Boni, Jiminyash is doing, or anybody is doing. You can just come out with your own methods if you don't have the capability, but please don't, don't neglect that dog or lock it behind there. Come up with any activity. If it's going for walks, that is also part of training because when you walk with your dog, you learn by, by the end of the day, let me stand, okay? You are walking, your dog was this. It was pulling you. Then later on, after like let's say a week, the dog will start like coming close, close and close to you. Then by the end of the day you have a mongrel which is healing by you the whole day like blah 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 blah. To me, I wish, we wish that most of our dogs like the Malinois, the Sebos, I wish they could be like the Rocco Mongrels by the end of the day. Because like have you ever seen a, a Kenyeji dog which is like a, how do we call them, Coco amount. The, the Motina dogs out there in the village, the way they live, it follows the owner to the shop, does a downstay. That's my dream by the end of the day. Yeah, but you see that's a rock of doing it better. It has no child aggression, it has no car aggression. It, yani it's a well-balanced dog, a very stable dog. Yeah, 
Okay. By the end of the day, the I told you, if you do something good, mm -hmm. maybe you know what you are doing, mm -hmm. or either you are a fool. I'm not calling those who have those dogs a fool, mm -hmm. but they didn't know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. But they allowed the dog to follow them little by little. He's like, oh, Tommy, 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 good boy, Tommy. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, you see the dog was, oh, I should follow my owner, mm -hmm. take him to the stage, mm -hmm. to the matatu stage, and go to work, home. and then goes back home alone. Yeah. Can you imagine oh. that, that view? Eh? Mm -hmm. And yet the owners did, didn't know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Then when they got Tommy, they, 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 they went mm -hmm. and just let Tommy out of the compound to be free. Mm -hmm. Then Tommy got socialized with the chicken mm -hmm. and also with the school kids, whatever, and the kids. Mm -hmm. Then Tommy, he became a good boy. He's now willing to protect the chicken mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. from bad stuff. Mm -hmm. Then the same same Tommy knows like this is a house you cannot enter in the house with murder. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So Tommy knows his place at home. Mm -hmm. And then the same same Tommy, Linda Nimbai. Even here I have one Kenyaji. And I tell you this gate you cannot enter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we don't rate dogs according to their breeds. We let them according to their owners and genetics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I find you with a Malinois, I expect you know what you're doing or what you're having. If I find you with a Sebo, I expect you know what you're doing or what you're having. Mm -hmm. If I find you with a Dutch Shepherd, I expect you know their character and temperament. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So stop getting dog, dog breeds of which you don't know what you're getting. You are like, okay. Mm -hmm. I, saw that I saw a Dutch. I saw Moldo on the hot pose mm -hmm. with a Dutch. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. He's like, I'm going to get a Dutch. Mm -hmm. To see me with that Dutch or that Sebo or that Malino or doing whatever crazy stuff I normally do, it's because I know what I'm doing. Because actually, I can be an inspiration to somebody, but I can be the cause of pain to also somebody by the end of the day. Because like, it's like this, like this scenario, you said there are more passionate young men out there, men and women, and also even old passionate people. Like I have a grandpa who comes in, at, he comes in actually around one, but Sikum Hepa one I'm Hepa. I've given him dogs. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want that dog which climbs up in the car. <laughs> and he's around 80 years or 82. Mm -hmm. So the grandfather sees us doing bite work. I need a tough dog. Mm -hmm. I want this dog and this and this. We have given him like two puppies, but he's not yet satisfied. He wants more. Mm -hmm. And then we have other, other young men out there who see us doing the kind of protection we do they try to copy the scenarios we do mm -hmm. but it's very risky mm -hmm. it's not recommendable it's not advisable if you don't have the correct uh, gears mm -hmm. if you don't have the correct skills mm -hmm. by the end of the day remember the so-called man best friend he's also he was derived from the wolf legendary wolf yeah of course mm -hmm. it said that 99 percent of the dog eats wolf yeah so even you, Linda, even if you today you see a sebo, don't just go buying sebo seeds. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you don't just go buying sebo. You just get your chihuahua, be cool with it. Then you come for 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 for. for. <laughs> you come for. You come for. <laughs> Moldo has just told me I should get a small puppy, like a small small breed. I cannot handle big breeds. No, 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 no. I haven't yet said that. I, I just said this. You just keep with the Maltese. If you go get inspired with this so-called working breed, mm -hmm. visit anybody you know mm -hmm. who is well experienced mm -hmm. with the working with the working dogs. Mm -hmm. Take one, two, three months. Mm -hmm. Be giving him often visits. Mm -hmm. Study about the genetics, how these dogs works, how they think mm -hmm. before you even think of getting one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So before you're getting the dog from that reputable breeder, the breeder is going to tell you, and he normally does, like, okay, in this litter we were expecting this and this and this. Mm -hmm. So you as the normal person or the dog lover, mm -hmm. he'll tell you about the breeds. When you come to us, we also breed our own Malinois. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, most people knew, used to know me because of the Malinois. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when it comes to our Malinois, we don't sell our Malinois mostly to everybody. Mm -hmm. We do it selectively. Mm -hmm. Not because of the money you have. I rather give you my Malinois for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of which you have given many. Mm -hmm. But it will depend with the kind of knowledge you have based on the breed mm -hmm. and also the passion you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like I have a guy, his name is Charles. 
uh, about the blessed Malino, yeah. like the owner who is Charles, mm -hmm. that guy, he has time for his dog. So whenever you see that dog working, you're so like, okay, wow, those people are doing it the right way. Ile dogia na skiza ule jamaa wana flow, it didn't take a month, Linda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the truth, as a matter of fact, the truth is he invested time, mm -hmm. coins, mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. sacrificed his own things. Even for me, as you can see, at this time, I'm not in a cafe togo taking tea. I'm at home. You found me at home. Mm -hmm. I, as I told you, I wake up at 3. Yes. Yeah. I, by that, take me through that. Why do you wake up at 3? I wake up at 3 so that I can have even my personal life also. <laughs> yeah. Because if I wake up at 3, mm -hmm. I wake up. Mm -hmm. First thing I do, mm -hmm. I, I just wake up, mm -hmm. switch on the, the lights, mm -hmm. put some music. Yeah, put some loud music. Yeah, the neighbors get annoyed by me, but I put the music for their own safety. Yeah, I, I, I put the music. Mm -hmm. Then I, we start the work. Because the loud music helps us in uh, socializing our dogs from the noisy areas. As you can see, I'm in a rural setup. Yeah, so me opening the loud music will help the dogs. Yeah, when if my dog goes today in the CBD of Nairobi, it will be very comfortable. Yeah, so you have the speakers at our kennels. The dog so that they can feel the morning grow they like <laughs> okay but okay cut the story short so uh, i wake up at three we start first of all with the puppies we take the puppies out we do some food roaring that stuff some playtime yeah of which all our puppies we condition them with food first then after we finish with the puppies we come to the junior dogs we train them a bit then we go to the other dogs, which are the ranch dogs. We train the ranch dogs during that time because the dew is still the the grass is still wet. Yeah. Then it, because it's so cold here in Rimuru, so and the, our training gadgets, as you can see, I, I, I'll take out some of our training equipment. We have the bi suit, which weighs around, let me say, 40 to 60 around their cages so you can imagine that equipment uh, under the sun you wearing that thing under the sun so we like it in the morning the decoy feels breasted like to have a cold thing in the in the cold and he's like oh here comes the dog Poof. then you have the the detection dogs here the green dogs this is where we are seated it's normally our training ground the home training ground we have two grounds we have this one and that one there at the center so the green dog, they just come, search, 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 search. Yeah, then when you come to nine, nine, all the dogs, the kennels are clean. We chain all the dogs out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that they can sun bask. Mm -hmm. Then that's the end of our morning. I take my tea at 11. Yeah, always at 11. Yeah, that time is only dogs and it's dogs. Yeah, so then the other thing we do is that when it it's uh, three from three, mm -hmm. we come back to the kennels again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, in the it's not necessarily me. I have a team of young guys here. Yeah, they are like let me say, one is most of them are from the NYS. Mm -hmm. That is where most of my guys are from because of the discipline and all that. Yeah. And also they are physically stable. I believe they have done some training on their physique. <laughs> yeah. As I have told you, you must be physically and mentally fit yeah, for the job. So from three, that is when my neighbor here, the school, the primary, their kids start coming out of school. So we take our dogs out for socialization from three to five. To five that is sorry. Because the, the rural primary kids, they come out at 3.10, three yeah, 3.10. Three so we, here we start putting the dog's collar, whatever, we go into the gate to start playing with the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, if you have time, you can wait until 3.10, we do that. You see how it's fun. Then, up to 5.30. Then from 6, we have the protection dogs, the personal protection dogs. That time, it's majorly their time. Yeah, so because our local pubs or the clubs they are being opened yeah people are coming for shopping in our small center we take our dogs at that time out for socialization because now it's not the kids 
it's the big stuff like I'm levy coming up on your dog on your protection like la, 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 la. so the dog should be stable that is not a threat that is just a disruptor yeah yeah so mimi naweza ingia club na dog kidogo okay i can we, we take some out our dogs for socialization in the clubs yeah you just come in front of the door you pass and go to the back door not for you to take a tot but for the dog to take some of the music there and enjoy the company because all dogs as we had said and you said it again and again for those who are locking their dogs it's not safe for the dogs for their mentally brain is not safe yeah but when you socialize the dog you expose the dog they become stable so we are looking for stable environment as you can see here we have some sheets those sheets also are for making the dog's nerves be stable like i can put the dog on a down stay there or a sit stay then we jump on the sheet when the dog is there so the dog will be like whoa, whoa but it should stay there still despite the whatever the those noises despite the uncomfortable ground yeah then we have a river we do take our dogs out for some walks not all the dogs but i wouldn't lie to you and tell you oh linda all my dogs know how to swim no but each dog we address the and we address the activity according to the dog's capability and according also to my time yeah because we don't have many dogs many people think mk nice have like a million dog no we only have 10 of them yeah and in those 10 dogs two of them are the scholars yeah they come for school like this rich kids they are like yo 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 <laughs> my daddy just dropped me out of the road yeah you see? like they come they enjoy time here then they go back home like elevo he's a day scholar and he likes it here he then actually the, the next shoot we are going to do linda we are going to go home to home to some of the clients with these dogs like you just see the way these dogs behave even to guests all that yeah but that's a story for another day so as i was telling you the we take our dogs out for socialization then they come back yeah but this period where we br- we, we took a break we have a guy who normally feeds the dogs yeah I think we've had enough of the talk we want to see some action and uh, I think for me there's something I want to insist on before you go buy a dog <laughs> do your research do your research on the breed the temperament what is required of you do not just go buy a breed because you saw it and you're like oh fierce dog I want to get that or oh cute dog you want to get that it might be cute but it's temperament does not align with the cuteness so do your research before getting any dog also before you get your dogs know the kind of work you're going to give to the dog if it's a companion dog you've got to create time for the dog if it's a protection dog you've got to get a well stable dog well built genetically everything the conformation or the whatever yeah then after the conformation and all those because if today you get let's say uh, a great den like a harley queen mm-hmm. because you you saw it's big fierce mm-hmm. and let's say you wanted the dog to do a protection job mm-hmm. and later on the dog fails you you start like oh the dog oh hiyo mbwa ni kulala ni kungorota snoring and all that no stop blaming dogs know your dog know the type of job you want to give to your dog and also create time for your dogs do the socialization and all will be well with that you will actually enjoy and in the near future you find yourself being a person who can give advice not like a person who can give advice or anything about dogs yeah because by the end of the day these creatures love us so much than they love themselves so linda kindly take it from here yeah yeah okay <laughs> yes, yeah, so you 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 go- we are going to the training. I, I know you're looking forward to the training. Are you happy the talking part is over? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but then the day, okay. My fellow my fellow colleagues out there the trainers, the dog lover, it's not easy sitting on this spot. <laughs> okay, mostly for me like holding this mic. Yeah, it took a lot of confidence and work thanks to Linda for Okay for the encouragement. Today I learned something new. Mm-hmm. So thank mm-hmm. thank you for mm-hmm.
for boosting me with the confidence. Okay, thank you, fellow viewers. Keep it dog TV, the best dog documentary, dog show. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you had it. It's not easy being Linda. <laughs> you wanna give it a try? Give me a call. So people, we've had a beautiful day. We've had an awesome day. We. Hey, the training, the things I've seen, awesome, awesome things. And uh, if you enjoyed the show, definitely subscribe, hit the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. Don't forget to share, leave your comments, give us your thoughts, and come uh, on, share the love, share the love. Let's keep co uh, the cold on my face. Anyway, this is Linda Kenyatta and this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. See ya!